There are very few builds that I love in Destiny, but this one, ooh, I love this one. Today, I'm gonna show you a build that carried me to my first ever Wave 50 Legendary Onslaught, making it feel like normal. I'm sure you already know what Exotic will be running because of the thumbnail and the title, so let's go ahead and cover what Exotic armor piece we're using. It's Necrotic Grips, baby. Necrotic Grips has been a certified classic since the day it came out. It is actually one of the exotics that made me want to try Warlock in the first place. It comes with the perk Grasp of the Devourer, so that damaging combatants with a melee poisons them, dealing increased damage over time. Defeating a poison combatant spreads the condition to nearby allies. It also provides a moderate benefit to airborne effectiveness stats of all weapons of sorrow. And that's honestly the best part of this whole thing. Airborne effectiveness is so amazing. It's gonna be so OP in final shape. I'm just kidding. Here's how the poison works. You get the gist? It's really not that complicated. To put it simply, your poison damage will ramp up depending on how many times an enemy has been hit by poison. And as you can see, we have four weapons that can apply poison as well. Oh, what's that? Why is one of them glowing yellow and way bigger than the other weapons on the list? Well, let me tell you. Because we're fucking using that one, you dumb fuck. Obviously, you saw the thumbnail, idiot. Use your context clues, for brains. <sighs> Let's talk about Thorn. Thorn is an exotic kinetic hand cannon making it one of a kind. Did you believe me when I said that? Like, did you actually think I was telling the truth? I said it's one of a kind, when there's actually eight exotic kinetic hand cannons, which is a ton and I had no idea. Anyways, what makes Thorn so special is its exotic perk. Mark of the Devourer. Rounds pierce targets and deal damage over time. Kills with this weapon leave behind remnants. And because we already brought our remnants, let me tell you about the exotic trait Soul Devourer. Absorbing a remnant strengthens Mark of the Devourer and partially refills the magazine. And because I just told you what remnants do, let's cover the catalyst, Refined Soul. Refined Soul grants bonus range and stability, as well as when you deal a final blow or absorb a remnant, you gain increased weapon range, as well as mobility and handling for a short time. Thorn is the definition of exotic. It's a damaging over time, piercing hand cannon that can overflow and refill the mag when you get kills. What a beauty! And with all that, it does a pretty decent job against orange bar or major enemies. In a DPS phase, you can even tag the boss a few times in between reloading, making it the perfect throw in for bait and switch, rocket launcher, or grenade launcher. Then because we're pairing it with necrotic grips, we'll be applying a poison every single shot. And once the target dies to the poison, it will spread the fear toxin to its nearby friends, poisoning them, making it an amazing choice for ad clear. Thorn is no joke, my favorite hand cannon in the game right now. No, no sunshot, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it like that. No, not that. I'm just tired of you. You never change. You think you can dominate the meta and insert yourself into all of my build, even if it's not a solar build. Holy fuck. I'm talking to a Destiny gun right now. I, I might need a break before final shape. Uh, anyways, uh, Thorn's Catalyst is definitely a great bonus for it, but in my eyes, it's way more beneficial in PvP instead of PvE. Let's go ahead and cover our subclass so you can get the best possible of understanding of how this build will play out. This is a strand-based build. Your super is going to be Needle Storm, of course. For your abilities, you're going to want the following. Your rift will be Healing Rift, because life is always better than death, unless it's your enemies. Your melee is Arcane Needle. It's our only option, but thankfully, it's a damn good option. The perfect comparison for Arcane Needle is Yandu's Needle from Guardians of the Galaxy. It seeks enemies down, then proceeds to unravel them, dealing a ton of damage, and then poison them thanks to Necrotic Grips. And look. I know there's at least one person watching this who still doesn't know what Unraveling Rounds actually does, and don't be shy, because I was that person until like 3 months ago. Unraveling Rounds spawns seeking threads on enemies, dealing damage and spreading to nearby enemies, which is the perfect pair for Necrotic Grips, because now we get two damaging overtime effects that spread to nearby enemies. And then for your grenade, we're going with Shackle. I know this is a slightly unconventional choice for Warlocks, because most of the time you see a Warlock using Strand, they're running Threadman build. But trust me, in this build, Shackle allows us to tangle our enemies in the air and will allow us to stun unstoppable champions, making it the perfect fit. Now for our aspects. Up first, we have the Wanderer. Tangles you throw, attach to targets, and detonate into a suspending burst. Destroying a tangle creates a suspending burst after a short delay. Threatening final blows also create a tangle. I know we just talked about Shackle Grenade being an amazing choice, but these tangle explosions are sick too. They pair together amazingly. We want all the suspension possible because it'll make it that much easier to poison groups of adds if they're all just hanging in the air together. And your second aspect is Mind Spun Invocation. Hold to consume your Shackle Grenade and activate Weaver's Trance. 
final blows while Reaver's Trance is active create a suspending detonation. This is my first time ever posting a Strand Warlock build. And reading through the aspect, I was like, there's no way this aspect is as good as I think it is. And man, I, I was wrong. This thing is way better than I thought. It is a perfect fit for any game mode that has a lot of add density, like Onslaught, because you can suspend and poison a massive group of adds by killing a single enemy. Okay, that's all for our aspects. Let's go ahead and talk about what fragments we want to run in this build. Numero uno is Threat of Fury. Dealing damage with tangles grants melee energy per damage instance on enemy ranks. On the screen, you can see the exact amounts. 10% minimal melee energy per tangle is a massive help to give our melee back as soon as possible. Edos, Threat of Warding. Orb of Power pickups grant Woven Mail for 10 seconds. Woven Mail grants you 45% damage resistance, so yeah, the less damage we take, the better. Trace, Threat of Transmutation. Weapon kills while you have Woven Mail spawn a tangle at the target's location. Ideally, we'll have Woven Mail 24-7 due to all the orbs we'll be creating, so we should be generating tangles on cooldown, giving us constant suspending explosions. And lastly, we have Threat of Generation. Dealing damage grants grenade ability energy for each damage instance. Unlike Threat of Fury, I have no idea how this works exactly, so it gives you more grenade energy, the more the better, so we take it here. Let's take a deep dive into our mods real quick, because they'll play a key part in this build. Our helmet is as simple as having a kinetic siphon to generate ore with thorn and heavy ammo finder to find heavy ammo. In case you didn't know, heavy ammo finder grants ammo based on kills with non-heavy weapons, and exotic primaries grant the most possible towards the progress of an ammo brick. So roughly every 20 kills you should get a brick of heavy ammo. Then for your gauntlets, equip a heavy handed for orb generation and an impact induction to grant grenade energy when dealing melee damage and momentum transfer to generate melee energy when dealing damage with grenades. It might sound really confusing and like a bunch of gibberish, but in reality, it's just using one of your damaging abilities to gain energy for the other and vice versa. You don't need to think that far into it, baby girl. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> On your chest. Chest is fully preference, to be honest. But if you're going for Legend Onslaught or any content harder than that, throw in some resistant mods here and maybe a reserve mod for whatever power weapon you're running. Then on our boots, we're running a stack of Invigoration, Recuperation, and Absolution. I feel like I recommend these three on every single build possible, but, but this stack's going to grant you a good chunk of melee, grenade, and class ability energy whenever you pick up an orb of power, on top of also giving you some health. And to wrap it all up on our bond, we're using Reaper to generate an orb after getting a kill after using our well, and powerful attraction. So after we get that kill after using our well, we can vacuum up all the nearby orbs. Gold in your butt orb. And now that we covered the armor mods, we'll finish up with artifact mods. Look, this build is going to be good even when Final Shape launches, so thankfully we don't 100% need any of these mods to have an amazing build. But up first we have Unstoppable Hand Cannon. I mean obviously, right? I'm only including this because the entire build is built around hand cannons and it, it doesn't hurt to have a guaranteed champion stun. Next up is Unraveling Orbs. Picking up an orb of power grants unraveling rounds for 7 seconds. As much as I wish this worked with Thorn, it really only works if you pair a Strand Power Weapon in this build, but if you have a good Cataphract or Simotician, then it'll help while dealing damage to bosses and champions. And then the last mod is Horde Shuttle. Dealing sufficient weapon damage to an unraveled target spawns with Threadling. Our melee, and ideally our Power Weapon, unravel targets. So you should be dealing a ton of extra damage to these targets, which will spawn a ton of Threadlings all the time without any extra steps. And that's going to wrap this build up. Give it a shot for me so you can tell me how it makes you feel all warm and fuzzy inside. Thank you so much for watching. I'm trying to find a good base and way to do these build videos, so if there's anything you want to see or that I might have missed, please let me know in the comments. See ya!